Hello everyone. This is Sayyid Raza Mashhadi and I'm going to start session number three of ERT from zero to hero. I hope you have benefited the previous sessions and if you haven't watched those I recommend you to have a look on them and uh, then start this session because we've talked about some prerequisites that is needed to know before we will talk about these concepts of session number three. Okay, in this session I'm going to uh, have a look back at how the 2D resistivity method or the 2D resistivity tomography method was used in the, in, in the earlier stages and how the, uh, we know, the beginners of this methodology used to plot and illustrate data and analyze it. Then I will go through the sensitivity function which is the basis and one of the most important factors in resistivity inversion or inverse modeling and its understanding is very important. Uh, by means of sensitivity, by means of sensitivity function in one dimension, we will have the capability to answer this question: that how much deep an array scans the subsurface, or how deep we can go by a specific arrangement. This is an important question. And then, in the end, we will uh, tell you that how we can uh, plot sort of section of arbitrary electrode configurations. Okay, so in the earlier stages of 2D CVD tomography method or ERT, 2D ERT, uh, it was a question that how they used to illustrate and analyze the subsurface data, uh, the data that we measure, uh, how they would illustrate and show that and uh, you know convert it into information. To do so, I start an example by the dipole-dipole array, the most famous array in the literature, and then you will understand what was the metallurgy and how it is, is how our understanding has changed in recent decades about the ERT method. It is for a long time ago, but in understanding these concepts will be very beneficial to have a great understanding about ERT. So stay tuned. Consider a dipole-dipole configuration with A and N equals 3 in this system. In the beginning, it was a row that the lines with 45 degrees deep towards the airs coming from C, the center of C1 and C2 and center of P1 and P2 or the center of transmitters and the center of potential pair will give us the location of the measured point. So in this case, if we follow this line and this line, the star will be the location of the data point that is measured by this configuration. And for example, if we move this pair to the left and its center will be this, the data point would be here. And we put and when we put all of these data points together, we will have a capability to say that we are doing a tomography survey. So this would be the measuring point points of the dipole dipole array. Uh, whenever we have several stations and multiple measurements. Then they use these you know diagonal lines to find the location of the data points and they assume that what the measurement is providing is represented of that point. And then they calculate the apparent resistivity values of those data points and then interpolation. Finally, they will have 
an interpolated image which tells them how the resistivity changes but in fact it is apparent resistivity and as I stated in here and if we go forward you will see that it is not a sort of section plot and a sort of section means that it is not the true image it is something pseudo and it is apparent resistivity it is not the true resistivity these you know mentions are the same sometimes they even write these these depths as pseudo depths it is all so it's all about pseudo it is not the true resistivity distribution and I would like to know that this was the primary method these 45 uh, degree diagonals let's go ahead and find out what has happened during the advancements of ERT that we and where we are standing today so in here we need to understand the concept of sensitivity function the sensitivity function tells us to it, you know to how much extent a change of resistivity will be reflected back into the measured potential this is an important question because for example if you have a specific arrangement we have put in our electrodes in the specific places and we measure some response okay and consider that we had the capabilities to change the resistivity of a specific part of the subsurface and understand how much and in what way the changes would be whether if I for example uh, increase the resistivity of the surface uh, of uh, this airs close to the potential electrode for example in I don't know in dipole array what would be the change in the measured potential because by adding water in the surface layer we will have a decrease of resistivity how the measured signal will be affected by that and will it be the same for all of the places of the surface if it is between the current and potential electrodes or whenever it is just between the current electrodes or potential electrodes so exactly they are not the same and this is the uh, basis and this is the answer that sensitivity function gives us and it tells us how much that change of resistivity will affect our response and in what way whether it is going to increase or decrease the measured response so it is very important and by understanding this we will have the capability to understand the relationship between the pound resistivity and the true resistivity so the sensitivity function as the basis of inversion works like this the higher the sensitivity value the greater the influence of the subsurface region on the measurement so by a sensitivity sanction we will have the capability to say that which parts of the subsurface have the more have the most effect on our measurements so it is an important thing to provide so mathematically it is calculated by the frigid derivatives if I'm spelling it correctly for emotions have space definitely and I will take you directly to the final answer of these calculations and this is the 3d sensitivity function for pole pole array So as I have talked and I, as I have discussed, it tells us to what extent the measured signal or the voltage will change if we change the resistivity of an element in the subsurface material. So it is important when we're just analyzing the sensitivity sections, uh, just remember that relationship, that uh, ratio. The uh, this will be the measured signal or the voltage difference and this will be the differences in uh, resistivity of that part of the section so it is calculated for pole pole array a meters apart they c1 and p1 but how we can calculate this for other arrays it is easy because by putting 
And by having dipole to dipole array, we will have the capability to calculate any other responses or any other sensitivity functions uh, of uh, you know any array. For example, sorry, for example, for the dipole dipole array, we should consider the contribution of C1 to the potential in P1, C1, P2, C2, P1, and C2, P2. And then we will, you know, add all of these contributions, and then we will have the final sensitivity function of the dipole dipole array. Okay? So let's go to 2D sensitivity function examples. So it is important to understand these concepts. And when we're telling 2D, we say that one of the dimensions is uh, taken as um, taken as granted to be extended towards the infinity. Okay. So sorry for that. Sorry, I'm so sorry for this. Okay. This is the sensitivity section of pole pole array. And if you take a look at this, these are the positive values and these are the negative values. How does it mean? And how we can interpret this? So the higher the sensitivity values, the, the greater the influence of that part of subsurface on the measurement or on the measured signal or on the voltage measured okay for example if we change the resistivity of an element in this place just in this red area close to the p1 or in this place to the c1 its effect will be much much higher than changing an element in here because the sensitivity value in here is much lower than these areas. Or vice versa, in this dark blue area, if we change, so it tells us that the, near the potential and near the current electrodes in the pole pole array, we have higher sensitivity values. So if an element, if uh, there is a change of resistivity, uh, there will be much more predominantly change the measured signal additionally it tells us so we don't usually change the resistivities in a survey you know but it tells us that these areas with higher sensitivity values have higher contribution to the signal for, for example this area with respect to this yellow area has less effect on the measured potential so it would be something clear because the closer to the electrodes we are the stronger the influence on the signal will be and it tells us that for example and it tells us great things you know in here we have blue so if we decrease the resistivity in here the voltage measured between P1 and P2 will, will increase because it is negative. If we increase the resistivity in here, the voltage measured between P1 and P2 will be vice versa. Okay? So it is important to note this. Let's go through the other example. This is the Wenner Schellenberger array. And you will see that the sensitivity distribution is like this. If you have an instrument, you can easily test this. So, put your electrodes like this in a initial energy array and measure the potential. Then, in these areas that have negative values between the current electrodes and potential electrodes here, just try to, you know, uh, add a lot of water. What would you see? You will see that the decrease in resistivity in here will increase the potential difference between P1 and P2. So decrease in resistivity, the delta rho. So remember delta V over delta rho. If it is negative, 
if the delta rho is negative and the sensitivity is also negative so we will increase the potential difference and it tells us again that we have high sensitivity values in these areas so if we get away from the electrodes the sensitivities will be too low and that they do not have any effect on our measurements this is for n equals one this is for the dipole dipole array uh, you see the patterns are different and I would like to note that this is n equal, equals 1 and now if for different n values the sensitivity is different look at this this is this is n equals 1 this is 2 and this is 6 and all of the sensitivity set values are just with this uh, color scale you see that this is a huge difference between these numbers so as a result it tells us that uh, the sensitivity distribution of each configuration even for a single array is very different and we use these sensitivity values in the inversion process because this each measurement is predominantly effect predominantly affected by some areas and low you know much less affected by some other areas so we should take and we take advantage of this to calculate the true resistivity values of the subsurface by inversion process let's just be away from sensitivity for several minutes and go through the question that how much deep an array scans the subsurface what would be the depth of investigation of an array this is an important question the first useful study in this respect was Roy and Aparo in 1971 they have used 1D Fritchett derivatives or 1D sensitivity function and, and what mean by 1D it means that in two directions towards x and y until the infinities there is no variation so to, we have just one variation to, of sensitivity towards depths okay then they wanted to assume so by this they have assumed very thin horizontal layers and they tried to understand each of these layers was contribution to the total measured signal or to, to the to the total response now i would also like that it, i will also note that this is this equation is for the pole pole array and after the calculation it will be like this so for the pole pole we have a and this is the z so we just uh, have a function of z you know for different z values from zero to positive infinity we will have this and if we can you know uh, in fact divide uh, so it is this uh, you know formula is called the depth of investigation characteristics function or DIC function so if we use this function and use you know calculate the total integral of this function to get the total response and then we divide this formula by that response we have normalized it so it will uh, be uh, a, you know a function that the air that the area below the curve will be equal to one that's what the Roy and Aparo have done and they have calculated this as I said the total response and then the function is normalized and it is called normalized depth of investigation characteristics so or NDIC curve so what does it what, what is it used for now we have a function that tells us how much percentage of the response how much percentage of uh, uh, you know, if on a specific layer, sorry, let, let me tell this like this. 
this function will give us this information that in a specific layer for a specific layer in the subsurface for in the subsurface how much would be its contribution to the measured signal for example the first layer at the surface how much this layer affect and for example it has 10% it is not like that let's we say for example it has 1% uh, of the total measured signal for this configuration then the second layer so if we plot these values we will have to we will get some kind of uh, uh, you know curves like this the area below the graph is equals equals to one and this is the NIDC curve and it tells us for example which layer and now we can say for example up to this position for example up to this position which is now noted as maximum sensitivity if we calculate the area between these we can say for example okay 30% of the measured signal is representative of this area I mean there's from zero depths to maximum sensitivity depths got the idea so and Roy and Oparo stated that the maximum of this curve will be the depth of investigation means that the place that we have the maximum contribution a layer in in which we have the maximum contribution to the signal it will be the depth of investigation but because the signal is affected by the volume of the subsurface materials not by just one layer you know uh, ranges of the materials uh, Edwards in 1977 tested the methodology for another idea what the median depths of investigation it tells that whenever the uh, area below the graph is equals to is it equals to half that would be the you know rough estimate of the depths of investigation for that array and he concluded this by measuring 50 case studies in the mining industry on IP tomographies. Uh, most of them were dipole dipole array, and they concluded this, and it is, uh, you know, even accepted today. So this is what normalized observer investigation characteristics is, and it is a curve that provides us the contribution of the different layers of the earth towards steps to the measured signal and we can calculate the uh, you know, the effective uh, the median depths of investigation or it is also called the effective depths of investigation so whenever we say effective depth of investigation we mean the z median so let's go ahead this is the nidc curve i have calculated for a subset of the gradient array so uh, this is for the uh, in fact this array easy to do it and i would like to note that the effective depth of investigation is not identical for all lower arrangements even for a single type of array so for example in the dipole dipole array you can see that the n whenever n equals one two three it is variable it is not the same so go to the numbers this is the, the ed effective depth of investigation and a is the a parameter of the array you see that for example and this is the l of the array the, the total lengths of the array the space between the outer electrodes outer active electrodes of an array active i mean those electrodes that are not placed at infinity and if you look at the valential boundary array, it starts from a number of 0.17 to finally 0.191. So after a series of n values, it will be fixed. And this is for the pole pole array, pole dipole array, and pole pole array. Okay. So this is 
uh, we've talked about the depths. So in the soda section plot, now you know how the depths is calculated, and you can easily go to the course loop notes to have the you know the multiply the numbers that are calculated for different arrays. But sometimes you may need to calculate it yourself if you are using some kind of arrays that are not uh, denoted by Dr. Look. So, what is the x, y, z for an arbitrary electrode configuration in the total section plot? We talked about z, you know, uh, that it is the median depth of investigation will be the best option. The x and y coordinate is taken as two options. Sometimes it is taken as the location between the middle, in the middle of the potential electrodes. Uh, and sometimes the average of all of the electrodes or of the active electrodes used in the measurement. So it is different. So now with this session you will have the capability to uh, plot so the section plot of your data set easily. So uh, in the end uh, I would like to say that if you have any um, you know misunderstandings or if you have any concerns if you're interested in to read about more so I would refer you to Dr. Cor Luke course notes uh, in the joetomosoft.com the full tutorial if you download it you will see all of these things that I have discussed and about the Roy and Aparo and uh, 1971 and uh, Edwards 1977 they are very famous papers you can easily see them in the references of Dr. Kurs Lutz as well. Okay, so to sum up, I would like to say that we've talked about the x, y, z coordinates, coordinates calculation of arbitrary arrays, and now we can do that for different array types, and the depth of investigation uh, we talked about Royal Aparo and the median depth of the effective depth of investigation. I would like to say that uh, there was a misunderstanding about current penetration and depth of penetration, especially in VS surveys with respect to ERT, because current penetration depth, depth is only affected by, uh, in fact, the uh, location of the current electrodes. but in the measured signal, it is not like this. So the, uh, it is uh, in the median depth of investigation, and in the best scenario to have the depth of investigation understanding, we must consider potential electrodes as well. So uh, the current penetration is totally different from the uh, you know effective depth of investigation and the maximum depth of investigation, UV can have some uh, configuration of the, the electrodes that the current penetration is really high, but the depth of investigation is not that high. So take uh, this as a key point in your mind and keep it in your mind all the time. All of the concepts that we have just followed in this session is regarded and uh, related to soda section. So. It is soda, it is not translated, converted into the real, uh, in fact, uh, resistivity model, but, is, but it is the basis to understand ERT and it provides us a measure about the ERT coverage, ERT image coverage. So when we plot the you know, uh, soda section, we will have the location of the data points and then we will understand how which areas of the subsurface have been mapped or will be mapped by our design configuration. And it is a way to plot the measured data and to take uh, a look at the data and probably remove some noisy data points, so it is good to do it. But it, I emphasize that it will not provide you an exact image of the subsurface, even an approximate image, and it will be very different for different arrays. And in the next session I will discuss about this in much more detail. So in the next session I'm going to describe soda section versus inverted model, their variations um, and the you know the differences between these two 
and if you have any questions please email me at the following email address thank you have a nice day